Welcome to AM Best Audio. Welcome to the IMCA and AM Best Insurance Marketing Leader Lunch Webinar. I'm John Weber with AM Best, and joining me today is Dave Evans. He's a senior associate at Artric and an Insurance Marketing and Communications Association CMO Council member. In this program series, we dig into insurance marketing with a top marketing leader of a noteworthy insurance organization. Today, our guest is Lisa Rowland, Assistant Vice President of Marketing and Distribution at Berkeley Select. Prior to joining Berkeley Select in 2021, Lisa was the Marketing Director at Allianz Global Corporate and Specialty. She began her career as a commercial lines underwriter with a national carrier before moving to sales and marketing roles shortly thereafter. Lisa, welcome. So glad you could join us today. Thank you. Now, during this presentation, we may mention the subject of financial strength ratings. A full explanation of AM Best ratings is available on our website at ambest.com. The opinions expressed by our panelists are theirs and theirs alone and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of AM Best. In addition to our to our, uh, uh, in addition to our other platforms, today's webinar is being broadcast live on LinkedIn. If you'd like to watch today's event on LinkedIn, you can find us at AM Best Information Services. Finally, we would like to invite all of you to join in today's conversation by emailing us any questions at webinars at ambest.com. And now let's kick things off. Lisa, can you give us a little bit of uh, information about your career? why you were drawn to sales and marketing and your work in other organizations and, and what led you to where you are today? Sure. Well, first off, thank you so much, Dave and John, for having me here. I'm excited to be a part of this conversation, uh, you know, being a marketer. I'm usually on the other side of the camera, so this is a new experience for me and, and really excited to be here. So as you mentioned in the intro, I started my career in insurance, um, which has lasted over 20 years now, which is really to say, you know, I wouldn't be here if I didn't love it. Uh, I was recruited out of college into an underwriting trainee program with CNA. And so that really laid the foundation for the rest of my career and where I am today. We learned all of the fundamentals of insurance from underwriting, claims, uh, marketing, operations. Uh, I spent the first couple of years underwriting middle market PNC business before I moved uh, over to a sales role. And it was at this time that I started working more closely with the corporate marketing team. I was also pursuing my MBA and decided to focus on marketing. So fast forward a couple of years, earned my degree, uh, and then I was promoted to become the national marketing director there. Um, so from CNA, I moved over to Fireman's Fund and Allianz, where I helped develop the strategic marketing plans for several of their business units and had the opportunity to build out their customer experience program before coming over to Berkeley Select. Uh, so here at Berkeley Select, we focus on management and professional liability lines. We write um, DNO, EPL, and fiduciary for private and nonprofit companies. Uh, on the professional side, we insure lawyers and accountants. We're also building out our um, affinity programs uh, book, where we focus on allied healthcare and other miscellaneous professional lines. So in my role, um, I am responsible for all of the marketing, branding, communication, and distribution management. Um, it was just a great opportunity to come and build a, a team and a brand in a very entrepreneurial culture um, and with a company that is uh, looking to grow and innovate. So it's a little bit on me. So pretty interesting background there. And marketers today are focused on a multitude of tasks and are involved in nearly every area of the organization. So Lisa, what should marketers' top priorities now be? And what priorities are you most focused on? Yeah, so I think really for any marketing division, you know, the priority is driving revenue and growth to the business. 
Um, that's why it's really critical to, you know, for marketing to be aligned with the business goals and strategy. Um, you need to be driving those right opportunities to your sales or production teams, whether that's through strategic marketing campaigns, brand awareness, your website, social, et cetera. Uh, we've been running a series of campaigns here where we targeted a segment of our customers that we felt needed to uh, know us better and develop very uh, specific content to highlight our competitive advantages. And, uh, we, you know, we gamified it a little bit, wanted to make it fun and with very simple, you know, call to actions, whether it's downloading a piece of content watching a, a short video or attending a, a thought leadership webinar. Um, we, we've seen a lot of success out of that. And then, you know, maybe equally as important um, is being able to measure the success of your marketing efforts, um, being able to show that ROI. And it's really critical that you know what that is going into uh, your marketing campaigns, um, whether it's looking at your um, marketing metrics on open rates or click throughs or, you know, registrations or um, the business and increasing your new business opportunities or improving improving your hit ratios. You want to make sure that um, you, you know what you're trying to measure um, as part of your marketing efforts. In our campaigns, you know, we are looking primarily at the um, engagement metrics with our content with our content, but we've been able to attribute that with the revenue growth from, you know, those customers who may not have uh, otherwise sent us that, that business opportunity. And then third, I would say, is really being open to uh, keeping up with the pace of innovation and, and new technologies. I mean, there's so much happening in the world and making sure that you're taking the time to um, review like what, what's out there. Our team spends a lot of time vetting through different software and platforms. Um, just as a quick example uh, that we implemented recently, a new risk management platform uh, where we identified that, you know, this was really going to improve the experience for our policyholders um, on, with our EPL product. Uh, at the same time, it was giving our marketing team just a pipeline of content to help amplify our messaging. And then long term, because it's, uh, you know, with the risk management tool, it's going to help improve our profitability and retention levels. So that was, you know, a big effort, you know, from our marketing team, but also, you know, working with other departments and, you know, underwriting and IT or what have you. So um, that, that was uh, just a, a great win for us. Okay. So you mentioned the pace of innovation, Lisa. How can companies innovate for the future? Yeah, that's, you know, a big, broad question. Um, I think it's going to look different for every company, um, especially given, you know, your different size and, and what your business is. But I think there's a few, you know, fundamentals that are the same. Um, you need to create that culture of innovation and change. You know, we're, we're in insurance. A lot of companies have been around for decades, if not longer. So sometimes it's overcoming that status quo mentality, um, but making sure that you are communicating that need for change um, and uh, celebrating that, um, seeing failure as opportunities to learn. Um, that really will set the foundation for any company to be able to innovate. Um, the next is, you know, like, what, where do you innovate? And I think that always should start with uh, your customer and understanding their needs and their challenges. So whether, you know, you gather that feedback through surveys or focus groups, advisory councils, having that, you know, mechanism to listen to your customers, uh, to identify where you can strategically innovate and improve their, their experience. Um, you know, you have your, your customers, but also your internal customers are a great resource for ideas, you know, that your employees might have that idea on how you, your business can be more efficient. So um, I think that uh, shouldn't be forgotten. And then 
Third is having a process for implementing these projects. Um, here at Berkeley Select, we have an innovation methodology where we bring together cross-functional teams to work on a project for 100 days with the goal of having an output, um, some sort of output in 100 days. It is sponsored by an executive uh, for guidance, but it's really our employees who are the ones that are responsible for coming up with the plan and uh, the solution for some of these projects. And it's given our employees the opportunity to work with colleagues they may not otherwise have an opportunity to work with. It also, you know, provides that um, different differing perspectives when you're bringing together, you know, someone from claims and marketing and underwriting and operations. Uh, so that has been a, a very successful model for us here. Wow, that that sounds truly like an incubator for innovation. I mean, I, I, that's really exciting. I, I want to go back a sec, Lisa, and uh, this is off script a little, but that, that you'll be able to handle it well. So, you know, your background is a little unique in the sense that you, I guess you came out of the University of Illinois with a finance degree, then you eventually got your MBA uh, in marketing, but you were obviously you had the underwriting background. So, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, many, perhaps many of the audience being marketers themselves, their backgrounds may have been came up through English or journalism, liberal arts, and maybe now increasingly based on what you mentioned, technology. So now you might get technology oriented people, but they may not necessarily understand insurance. Uh, as we know, it's a very misunderstood industry, as you know, in trying to recruit people to begin with, right? They think they, mm -hmm. when you talk about the things you just talked about, I doubt many p young college graduates would have that top of mind to be, then if you said, oh, this is the insurance industry, they'd probably be shocked. They'd think it was FinTech or InsurTech. So my question is to you, how does someone who doesn't have that underlying background, um, when you're creating things about, as you mentioned, knowing your customer and the like, mm -hmm. what would you maybe recommend for those people whose background isn't in insurance to help them really learn and maybe feel respected by their colleagues that they know the business? Would you recommend necessarily like you went for an MBA? Would you say take some insurance specific content? I'm just curious what your thoughts might be. Yeah, you know, I would say first talk to your your colleagues in other departments, sit with an underwriter and learn what they do. What is, what is that underwriting process? Uh, the claims department is such a fun team to sit with and hear about what they do. And it really helps kind of take the product and then how that and you can learn about the claim side and how, you know, the the product that we're uh, selling to our customers, how it actually um, shows up at the end of the day. And, and the reason why um, people and businesses purchase insurance. So I think, you know, that to me is a great way to just learn the business. If you can meet with your customers, spend some time, maybe, you know, you're just, you know, attending a meeting with, you know, a, a salesperson or a, an underwriter or anyone where you have an opportunity to engage with your customers. I think that is the best way to start learning the business and asking questions. I mean, it is a very complex business, so don't be afraid to uh, ask questions and keep learning. I think that's probably the best way. Of course, you know, like additional schools and, and getting designations are helpful, but um, to me, at the end of the day, it's just talking with the people around you and, and engaging with your customers. All right. Well, that's certainly good practical uh, insights. I can imagine. I know Berkeley Select is well known for having some great liability lines. What's it like talking to a liability claims person? That must be an interesting conversation. <laughs> Uh, it is. It's fascinating. I, I actually sit right next to some of our claims adjusters and, you know, the stories that you hear, it's it's really ex an exciting area of our business and, and a great opportunity for marketers. You know, if you haven't talked to a claims person, you know, if you're on the insurance side, um, go talk to them because there's great content there for your marketing. Great idea. And, you know, as you talk about content marketing as and I say this as someone that's in that older cohort group, um, not John, of course, just me, but uh, 
now is things are skewing younger demographically as the people are. And as we know in insurance, my group is heading down the elevator increasingly and your age group is running things. I won't guess what that is, but uh, since you mentioned you had 20 years, I guess I should be able to add. <laughs> so my point is, how do you approach marketing now knowing that you know demographics are evolving? Yeah, I mean, of course, we're using uh, and leveraging different channels such as social media. We've started experimenting with, you know, different forms of content. We've um, produced some short form videos to help promote our brand and our product. Um, We're also partnering with different organizations that are, you know, helping us to target, you know, not just a generation, but different demographics um, that are in our target customer segment. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is, you know, we're, we're focused on now we're in a kind of post-COVID world, um, starting to make those authentic in-person connections and uh, with a focus on the younger generation. Uh, so as an example, we're, we're going to be hosting some of our broker partners in the summer and they're going to have an opportunity to um, learn from our executives, network with our underwriters. Um, and the goal is, you know, to make those long lasting connections with um, our brokers and our underwriters, because we know at the end of the day, it's um, people you want to do business with. And we're just trying to be, you know, aware of the different generational different differences and uh, connecting with those levels of our customers. Customize your data experience. Best Link now offers an interactive company dashboard that provides company-level intelligence in a fast, user-friendly interface featuring interactive tables, charts, and Sparkline performance histories. Customize the dashboard tiles to prioritize the insurer ratings, data, and analytics that best support your workflow. AM Best. Our insight, your advantage. Oh, so those seem like some of the essential building blocks um, how much of your time or materials or collateral, however you want to describe it, uh, are you creating for Berkeley Select and how much uh, perhaps is tools for the brokers that are reaching out to their customers? I'm curious how your uh, efforts work on both those directions. Yeah, I mean, it's always a mix, but, you know, with our primary audience being our our brokers and agents, um, the bulk is there. But as I mentioned, the tool earlier for our risk management, that has been an avenue for us to engage more directly even with our policyholders. Um, and a lot of that content we do kind of cascade through our, our distribution partners. So, um, you know, just from a different ways of engaging with our customers, um, that's been a, a great tool for us. And then obviously through social media, we're able to target um, different audiences there. Oh, and, and so you getting, it sounds so wonderful, all the things you're accomplishing. I take it you have a few challenges or hurdles every so often you have to overcome. What, what, do they look like? Yeah, I mean, every marketer has their challenges. It's, you know, while you want to, you know, do the research on what your customer needs are, um, sometimes you don't always get that right. And you've got to pause and, you know, maybe pivot on a campaign and make sure that you have your messaging right, or um, maybe the way you're you're communicating something isn't hitting your audience. Um uh, another issue might just be the alignment with your business partners. I mean, that is fundamental to launching a campaign. But if there are other competing priorities within your organization and your campaign isn't aligned with um, what your business partners are doing, you're not going to see the same levels of success. Um, and then I would say maybe a third challenge that, you know, I've come across just throughout my career, you know, is you, you want to measure everything, but you don't always have the right tools or access to data. So it's kind of working through internally who might have that information or sometimes um, we've had to build out those dashboards before we can really launch into any sort of uh, marketing campaign or initiatives. Great. Just this reminder, if you have a question for Lisa, you can send it in to us at webinars at ambest.com, and we'll do our best to incorporate it into our program today. Uh, Lisa, do you incorporate storytelling into your content marketing? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that has been a focus for us um, over the past couple of years. I mean, Berkeley Select is in a niche segment within the insurance industry. You know, we we write really two main products with our management and professional liability. So it is paramount that we are seen as the leaders in our space. So um, my team has been very strategic about developing content to showcase our expertise, whether that's through, you know, developing articles, blog posts, um, creating, uh, we posted a, a series of webinars with uh, both our um, executives, as well as some of our risk management partners to talk about trends happening in the industry. Um, we have our um, leaders that have been on panels, um, certainly want to position them as experts in this space. Within our um, you know, website and social media, we're constantly highlighting our employees and they are the, our best marketers to showcase our, our expertise, um, making sure that they are seen as the trusted experts um, in this space. And all of that has really helped to improve our brand and, and be a uh, trusted brand to uh, our customers. You mentioned trusted brand there, and I understand Berkeley Select just recently launched a new brand. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, of course. So, uh, you know, we've been around for over 30 years, uh, but in the last couple of years, we've gone through a, a number of changes. We've had new leadership. We've brought in new talent across the organization. We are growing more than we have ever before. And so it was just a great opportunity to take a step back, uh, really redefine who we are as a company and as a brand, uh, and at the same time kind of create that new um, visual identity. So we started with our, our employees internally a better to get a better understanding of what they see as our strengths and competitive advantages. Then we took that and validated and tested with our customers to make sure that our messaging was relevant and differentiated in the marketplace. Um, for our logo, uh, we were very thoughtful in making sure that, you know, it was um, showing kind of our past as well as, you know, where we're going into the future um, and highlighting our value proposition of that skill, speed and strength that we uh, like to highlight and um, making sure that our brand is seen as, um, you know, a business that people want to work with. On the website, I, what our customers are going to see is a, a more humanized brand. We really, you know, kind of going back to that trust and that storytelling, making sure that we're highlighting our people, um, showcasing that entrepreneurial culture that we have here, our inclusive culture, and why we are a great company to work for. Uh, so that was, you know, that was a big effort uh, this past year and in, in really uh, launching the, the new brand and look and feel for us. Uh, do you find it to be a challenge to effectively communicate the reasons behind the rebrand, especially to internal stakeholders? You know, we were very thoughtful in how we approached the rebrand. Um, again, we started with our executive leadership team. We held in-depth interviews with them to get a sense of, you know, what they viewed as our strengths, but also where they wanted to see, you know, us go into the future. You know, we started to bring in other managers and team leads to that conversation as well. Um, we met with every department within the company as we were as we were working through the rebrand to understand their needs, their challenges, where we might be able to help improve um, on, you know, in our website and tools that they might have, they might need um, that we could support. Uh, so, you know, we were, we were able to convey a lot of that before the actual uh, launch of the brand. 
with the logo, we actually had a lot of fun with it. Um, we narrowed it down to kind of the final three choices, and then we let our employees choose the winner and were able to um, reveal that at one of our um, all employee meetings. So um, no one was surprised by anything. We, a lot of thought went into making sure that we were messaging the rebrand and the need for it and, and getting input from employees throughout the process. Yeah, and you know, it's amazing when you think about, you mentioned like this 100 day, uh, I don't know what's the best way to describe it, uh, uh, initiative that you guys <laughs> put together, which is really fascinating. I take it like when you're competing for talent, are those the kinds of things that you're you know, talking to, and I hate to keep saying young people, but let's face it, um, <laughs> the industry looks looked a lot more like uh, John and I did when we came into the industry than today in terms of the talent pool. So, you know, are, are there other episodes or things you do? Are there certain conferences that you guys go to or you're, I'm just curious how you get people in interested in the industry these days? Yeah, I mean, obviously through, through a number of different channels, um, but I, I'll mention one that's been um, a newer partnership for Berkeley Select, and that's been our partnership with Gamma Iota Sigma. It's a an organization that is, has chapters across a hundred or so universities and colleges, and it's a resource for students interested in pursuing careers in risk management and insurance. Our president, Dan Sprague, actually sits on the board of this organization, and that has really helped to bring awareness to you know, the Berkeley Select and the WR Berkeley brand to these students. Uh, GIS has about uh, over a 35% um, membership from diverse backgrounds. So that, you know, is helping to attract a different demographic maybe than before. Um, they also support these students and sending them to different conferences and preparing them for interviews and ultimately placing them uh, with positions in the insurance industry. Um, you know, you mentioned other conferences, and we we do try to be very visible at different conferences. I'll be at um, a Women in Insurance Leadership Conference next week with a handful of colleagues. That's something that we are always trying to push um, and promote as opportunities for uh, our employees to learn and develop. Uh, we also have a, a number of mentorship programs. So, you know, we'll bring in, um, we'll connect different employees from different parts of the organization, both at Berkeley Select and um, throughout the broader uh, WR Berkeley organization to um, engage with um, executive leaders. We have an internship program um, that we're very active with. So we'll bring, we've brought in interns for uh, almost every summer and a lot of them have stayed uh, with us and have been able to, um, you know, grow their careers. And so that's always uh, great to see. Wow, those are sound like a lot of great steps. It's, it's interesting. Gamma Iota is a great, I'm uh, familiar with them from my days at the Big Eye. They do great stuff. I often wonder, what would their hazing be to join? Would you have to read a whole policy form and all the endorsements? A little insurance you. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they don't really haze for that. Um, but, you know, the, the other thing I would just add is, when you have uh, people that you're interested in and they have other opportunities um, and they look at someone like you who, you know, is, is young and, and is accomplishing a lot, do you find that, you know, what they perceive the insurance industry to be is, is so much different than what it really is? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, they have a vision of, you know, sitting, you know, at a desk and, and not really engaging with people. And, you know, it's it's boring. It's, uh, yeah, and it, it's so different. And, you know, I just think back to, you know, maybe what my perception was early on, but um, I, at least, I, you know, I quickly realized it is such a people business. You get to engage with so many different people and it's fun and exciting and there's always new challenges um you know it, it's just such a wonderful opportunity for young people to have a successful career and you know again that's what we try to highlight in our marketing and on our website and you know as we're engaging with with uh young people in person um 
think it, it is something that uh, is still kind of a, a the best kept secret. But once you're here, you don't leave. <laughs> Well, what a great discussion this has been today. Lisa Rowland, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, and might I add to that, John, uh, Lisa, I believe you mentioned you're going to be at the IMCA conference June 24th through the 26th down in Orlando. I'll be there. But if people want to meet dynamic people like Lisa, uh, certainly there's time to still join. So uh, I'm sure uh, people will take you up on it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. Um, this has been a really fun conversation. And for you know anyone else out there listening, if you're still there, feel free to also reach out to me on LinkedIn. I am always happy to talk insurance and marketing uh, with anyone out there. So thank you. Thank you. And Dave, before we wrap things up, another mention of the uh, upcoming conference? Yeah, the IMCA meeting is in Orlando. There's nothing Mickey Mouse about it. There's a lot, number of great sessions uh, that will be there. But as Lisa said, the opportunity to connect with people that you can share your challenges and hear about theirs uh, are just great. And so, um, again, I think it'll be a very worthwhile session. Thanks, Dave. We'd like to let our viewers know that we will have a full replay of this webcast posted within the next day or so. We'll have a full uh, transcript out within the next week or so, along with Dave Evans. For I Am Best, I'm John Weber. Looking to get the full attention of the insurance industry? We have the platforms that will do just that. Whether it be AM Best TV, AM Best Audio, Best Review Magazine, or Best Day. Find out more by calling AM Best Advertising Sales at 908 439 2200, extension 5399, and have a great day.